What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. So today we wanna to talk about growing your biceps and whether or not there's an advantage to lifting heavier weights and trying to do so or lifting lighter weights. Now guys, I'm gonna spoil something here for you, but don't go anywhere because it's gonna matter. You do have to do both. You should be lifting heavy, you should be lifting light. However, what you should be lifting right now actually is something that can be variable between person to person. Something's different for you versus somebody else depending upon the situation you find yourself in right now. And that's what I want to address in this video. So what are we talking about? Well, when we talk about lifting heavier or lighter weights, it really comes down to something more about the contribution of muscles in a more heavy compound lift or the need to find more of a mind muscle control over a muscle in an individual, smaller, isolated, lighter lift. Right, so it, to start that and to get, kind of dig into that, we just need to hold up three fingers, right? And in this here, we have representation of, let's say, three muscles contributing in a bigger compound lift, right? And we know that if I try to contract this muscle alone and bring my finger down here to my palm, I can do, do this along with me. You'll feel there's a certain level of power that you can actually do that with, right? And when I take the middle finger and I do that, there's a certain level of power I can do that with in strength. And the last finger, when I bring it down, there's a certain level of strength that I can do that with. Right? But we know that when I try to move the three together, I could do it with much more force. Right? It's a lot easier to bring these three together. Now, obviously, there's some connectivity of the tendon here in this particular example, but it, it illustrates what happens in the compound lift. The contributing parts have the ability to contribute in different ways to the overall impact of that lift. Think about, in the case of a biceps, the weighted chin. I have gone on record saying the weighted chin up is one of my favorite ways to use a compound lift, heavy overload, to provide a great stimulus for growth for my biceps. However, we do know from research that you can actively contribute more or less to a lift from a certain muscle group based on focusing heavily on the muscle that's contributing. So if I'm up on that bar, I actually have an exercise I call the chin curl. I actually can bring myself up more with my biceps than I ha have to do with my lats just by focusing more on changing the alignment of my body and space here on the bar by actively trying to contract more in the biceps, keeping more of a 90 degree angle instead of folding them down. I can do that and shift the focus of that lift. So if that's possible, then we need to know that my muscle control over a muscle is heavily going to influence our performance on those bigger lifts, leading to bigger and better size gains down the road if we maximize and optimize our ability to recruit that muscle. So at that point in time, the ability to have my muscle control becomes imperative, even as a starting point, before you start to pile on in these more compound lifts. And we did some tests before. I said, hey, guys, what is your mind muscle control? Do you, know, do you know how much control you have over your biceps? A, when you do your bicep workouts, do you ever feel it in your biceps? Or are you just feeling it in your forearms or your shoulders or in maybe even your low back, right? That's sign one that it's not working for you. Sign number two would be if we could take that bicep into its most shortened position, can you feel it? Is it uncomfortable to contract in that position? And, and to reiterate something I covered in a video before, we know that the, the biceps is, is contracted when we flex the elbow, when we supinate the ear like this, so part one, part two, and then we flex the shoulder and bring it up. So if I get in this position here and I squeeze as hard as I possibly can, I can feel it very, very uncomfortable right here. Like I cannot hold this very long without cramping up. And I want you to be able to feel the same thing. If you don't, you don't have a good mind-muscle control. So when you go to your compound lifts, if you go to the weighted chin, you're really not using your biceps as much as you might think you, you are. And remember, this is, re is hiding the weaknesses and the imbalances. If I can't do this with, the, with much strength, or this with much strength, or this with much strength, but I do this and it feels strong, I'm not aware of the fact that the imbalances and the weaknesses are there. So we want to make sure we reveal those. So if you're someone that I just described that can't do this and feel that becoming really uh, uncomfortable or you don't feel your biceps in your training, what do you do? Your specific prescription is to do this, is to maybe forego the heavy barbell cheat curls like you see me doing here. And guys, I've covered this exercise. I love this one too. But if I'm not feeling it in my biceps, why continue to do it? Just because I said it's a good exercise? No, you need to do what's good for you. So what you need to do is you need to start mixing in some more of these exercises like this. This is lighter weights. This is a spider curl. And the benefit of the spider curl is it actually puts me in that position where the biceps are in that position of being able to be fully contracted, right? We have supination, we have elbow flexion, and we have that shoulder flexion with our arm up here out in front of our body. Work on progressively building up the ability to contract that with good force, which means I might have to dial back the weights considerably to do that. 
But that's okay, because in the long term, it's going to be better in the overall uh, pursuit of bigger biceps. Or I could do a standing dumbbell curl this way here. And again, the focus here is not to lift like a cheat curl, it's to lift with lighter weights, but to get all three components, getting that shoulder flexion in even at the very, very end, not too early, because we don't want to activate the delts to make them take over the movement. That would just be reinforcing something that's already wrong. We want to get them in at the end. So first flex, at the same time you have the supination going, and then we have the shoulder flexion at the end. But I would work on these with, with priority, but don't abandon the other bigger lifts. Like, don't abandon the weighted chin. You still could do the weighted chin, because we know what the benefits of that exercise are far beyond building bigger biceps. I do it as a great pulling exercise. But don't think that that's going to be your primary bicep builder if you can't feel your biceps at all when you do it. So continue to do it for your back and as a pulling exercise, but shift the focus of your bicep training to this. Now, let's say you're already in a position where you feel your biceps. You have great, you could do this, you feel it. You could do your bigger lifts, you feel it. How much reliance do you need to do these things? Not very much, but don't abandon them entirely, and here's why. If I had the ability to, to feel these moves like I do, I, have, I actually have the ability to really do what I said in those, those studies tell us that we can do, and that is to focus more on my biceps and recruit more biceps to a, a, a particular compound lift. If I have that ability, then focus more of your time on those bigger bang for your buck exercises. Do an underhand barbell row and really squeeze your biceps to get more recruitment there. Do a weighted chin and really squeeze your biceps if that's what you're trying to do. The focus of this video is building bigger biceps. Do those. Do your barbell cheat curls. But don't forget these because you never want to forget the fact that this is the basis of allowing us to contribute more individually to these exercises. We know that as this my muscle control improves, we take that improved strength of one finger back to this three finger movement here. We know that we've got a greater output in strength. Improve this one, improve this one, improve all three, we have a greater output. It's important. So you want to reinforce that at all times. You just don't, don't, don't need to rely on that so much. One exercise is fine. It's the same concept of doing rotator cuff work as a corrective. Right? It's reinforcing something we know we need. That becomes the role for you. Start focusing more on those bigger lifts and not relying on these things as sort of building that basis. But if you find yourself in that first situation where you do not have good control, be real with yourself, guys. Don't just do what I said was a great exercise. Be real with yourself. Realize your limitations and realize at the end of it, if you focus more time here, you're going to be uh, better off. One last point I'll make here about this. Is my muscle control, there are other benefits of this, guys. Yeah, of course there's more benefits here. The benefits are both aesthetic and athletic. Aesthetically, we know that as my muscle control builds in a muscle, as we're more efficiently able to recruit the muscle fibers of a certain muscle to an action, that the resting tone of that muscle goes up. Right? People say, God, Je Jeff, you look like your muscles are harder than mine. It's only just a matter of muscle tone. My resting muscle tone is higher than someone else's who might be hypotonic. And that's because I've been able to develop that over time. The resting tone is gonna to be higher. Performance-wise, we know how critical it is to athletic performance. You need to have graded muscular control over an action to be a great athlete. And graded muscle control means being able to grade the ability that your body reacts to some, to some activity. If I said, like Jesse here, here, pick up this bottle of water, bring it to your lips and drink it, this is what it would look like if he had the ability to grade that just perfectly so he could bring it up and drink it. If he was hypertonic, where he had an overreactive control of his muscles here, where he couldn't really fine tune this, he would look like this. And you get pretty damn wet in the process. The fact is, athletically, you benefit extremely from having precise control over a muscle, and my muscle control matters very, very much. So guys, I hope you found this video helpful. And, and again, be honest with where you are yourself. If you're more towards this point where this is already something you feel, then veer towards those heavier compound lifts and realize that you're, you do have the ability at any one point to focus that contribution of a certain muscle by focusing more on it, as the research shows. And if you're on that other side of the spectrum, be honest with yourself and start lifting some of the lighter weights and build up to the fact that you can move towards the heavier compounds over time. All right, guys, I hope you found the video helpful. Remember to leave your comments below. Let me know what you want me to cover in future videos, and I'll do my best to do that. If you haven't already, guys, please subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video. And also, if you're looking for programs that put the science back in strength, that realize there are differences between us, and we show you how to get yourself there step-by-step, step, they're available in our programs at athletenext.com. All right, guys, see you soon.